Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Nikon D200. It was announced November 1st, 2005. So this one's got some miles on it. It was their second prosumer camera after the D100. They kind of call that if it's got a lot of the professional features, but it's not their top of the line. Uh, it has a magnesium body, really high, uh, fastest shutter speed. This was so popular that Nikon had some real quality control problems when it was first released. Um, there was a thing where the camera body would think the battery was dead when the battery was fine, and autofocus locking up. Um, this one would do those periodically, but I just did a firmware update, uh, and it's still available on Nikon's website, along with a full PDF manual and they seem to have gone away. It has a 10.2 megapixel CCD charge coupled device uh, sensor. It's a DX sensor, so there's a crop factor. Uh, it's a 1.5 crop factor, so it's you know a bit smaller than full frame. It shoots RAW and JPEG. The shutter is vertically traveling goes from 30 seconds to 1 8,000th of a second and bulb mode. Flash sync is at 1 250th of a second. ISO is normally settable from 100 to 1600. There's a couple of modes they call boost where it'll bump that up to 3200. It does 3D color matrix metering 2. And I'm still learning what that means, but it has a 1,005 pixel dedicated CCD just for doing the metering. Apparently it analyzes the image and has a database of things about image attributes in a database, compares your image to those to try and get the proper exposure. Um, it also has multicam 1000 autofocus. It has 11 autofocus sensors which you can also group uh, using multiples as one sensor into a group of seven. It's sophisticated and complex. So for the matrix metering and for the uh, autofocus, I'll refer you to a Nikonian's website uh, down below. There's a guy named Daryl Young that has done amazing articles on the features in this camera. The viewfinder, and it has a nice built-in diopter, shows 95% of the frame. It also has a 2.5 inch uh, thin film transistor LCD. It's not articulating, but it's pretty easy to read most of the time. This will shoot 5 frames per second continuous, up to 37 frames uh, JPEG, or 22 frames RAW. One thing I really love about this, it will shoot with any lens, with a very few exceptions, uh, from 1977 forward. Any of the AI lenses, the auto indexing lenses, any of the older autofocus lenses, and even up to the modern G lenses. The one I've got on it, uh, the 18 to 70, is a modern G lens just has the electrical contacts, the motors in the body, similar to an EOS system. But I've also got a few lenses that are the older AF. There's this little bump out right here. It's attached to a motor. It's like a flat-bladed screwdriver. And then on the lens body, there's the corresponding slot. So it uses the motor in the body to drive the autofocus lenses. And old, auto fo uh, old manual focus lenses work just fine as long as they're AI or AI converted. It has a uh, built-in speed light. It's guide number 12 meters. Has a lot of the, the usual modes. Normal, red eye reduction, slow sync, uh, red eye plus slow sync. The slow sync's if you have a slow shutter speed to pull you know a dark background and then pop the flash on the subject that's much nearer one thing that I love that this camera has that still 
except for top-end pro cameras, it has a rear curtain sink. So that when it pops the flash and you're using a slow shutter speed, your drag lines are behind the moving object. There's a lot of them, you'll get the blur lines and then your object and it looks like whatever's moving through the frame is moving backwards. We're used to the blur stream being behind whatever's moving fast. So I really, really love that feature on this guy. Um, it has Nikon's ITTL hot shoe. I'm really, really still learning what that means. I don't have an external speed light for it yet, so it hasn't been that important. Um, for a full-on review, uh, also down in the comments, there's a great article at DP Review. I'm really loving this camera. It's only 10 megapixels, but to get the features and the build quality of this guy in a modern camera, you have to go to their to their professional series and spend a lot more money. So I'm really liking this, so I'm going to shoot with it a lot, and I'll see you then.